Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the most exclusive card in Magic the Gathering for some time. It is not a masterpiece, it is a buy a box card. Now many of you might ask, why is this exclusive? It's because it's not new artwork on this card. The only way you can get this card is buy a box promo. Let me repeat that. The only way you can buy this, get this card is buying a box from your local game store. You cannot get this card in a booster pack. You cannot get this card in a, another promo of some type. It doesn't have different artwork. It's not your game day promo. The, if you wanted this card, you would need to buy a booster box from your local game store. Now on the surface, this seems like an amazing concept, right? Local game stores we know are not doing very well and they need some help. Why not give them a card that encourages people to go to the store, spend some money on boxes, not just buy online retailers. Sounds like a good concept, except what if that card was something actually good? So this card is, it's not bad. You might want to use it as a Boros Commander. It is a Minotaur. It's a very good Minotaur for that Dingaroo. Like incredibly, I mean, this is OP for on Dingaroo. But what if it was Tamagoyf? And the only way you could get a Tamagoyf was in this limited buy a box. And your game store was not willing to sell them or give the promos out. Let me tell you about the promo Falia, which is worth like two bucks now. The local game, the person who used to be the tournament organizer, he freaked out when he didn't even want to give me one promo Falia. And I bought a case. I didn't even get one because he kept them all himself. So it wasn't like the store kept them. It was he kept them for the store as a turn as a speculator. Like he was always speculating on cards that didn't make any sense. You gotta, if you're a store, you need to actually sell, 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 right? But instead he would buy and trade certain cards. In this case, it was Promophilia. So he wouldn't give them out. He would just quote, hold them for the store. I, I don't know, uh, he eventually was let go. I don't know what happened to the Promophilias. I just know that no one was giving any of them and he was supposedly speculating on them on the store's behalf. All types of bad things, right? But yes, Meryl is aware of this. To whom should we direct our complaints about the exclusivity of Fire Song and Sunspeaker, a card that is only available at your, lo at your local game store if you buy a box? You can voice them to me. Emailing me through the link at the bottom of my column allows me to forward them to the proper people. By the way, I have strongly received the message that this is unpopular with a lot of players. So why did we do it? Uh, we did it because we got to Some of these decision making, it's like Magic does these polls and I'm sure it has such a big fan base on Facebook that they could just ask before they do something. Like for Masters 25, couldn't they just ask, hey, should we include an extra booster pack? Would any of you guys enjoy that? And people are like, yeah, that's awesome. The booster pack, I honestly believe that if, and I know Masters 25 was is not a great set right now, but had they had an extra free pack, so instead of 24 packs, you get 25 packs, and assuming the market price was still the same, I think that would have been really nice. That would have been a great gift. That would have been a great celebration of the 25 years of magic. Here we have a card that for whatever reason is only available at your local game store. Now, some local game stores are actually not local game stores. They just sell online and you will see these online. So the question here is why does it matter if we can buy just singles online anyway, which is true for this card. It's true because this card is not particularly good. Now, if it was another promo, they promised they would never make something more rare than a mythic than they made the expedition. Depending on numbers, this could be as rare as an expedition, 
mainly because I'm pretty sure only the first batch, like only the first like few people who buy a box get one. So it's not like every box you buy one, it comes, it's not like the other games. Uh, Vanguard and other games I played, the promo is actually inside the box. So you know if I buy this box sealed, I'm going to get a promo. I think local game stores have different boxes from other places. So he got the message. And we are not going to see any changes for a while. Because, quote, it takes a long time to implement, quote, changes. I just don't know why they don't ask people. Like, th like this is not a good surprise. It's not like, surprise. And let me take one concept that should have been an excellent, excellent idea. During Averson Restored, there were these things called Hell Volts. If you didn't play during that time, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But these Hell Volts would contain foil tokens. So your regular Hell Volt would have just regular cards. It would just be non-foils, and the average price of the package that would be given to a player that night would probably be like 2 bucks. Well, some Hell Volts for only advanced stores, not every store got them, only advanced stores had the possibility of getting them, had 50, a packet of 50 demonic tutors, judge demonic tutors. At that time, it was a $200, $250 card. So imagine going to pre-release and, you know, going to your local smaller game store to support them and you, you get your promos and cool. And then you find out that larger game store next to you, which is an advanced store because they sell more boxes, Blanky blank, everyone got like $500 of stuff because not only did they get the Judge Demonic Tutors, which is 200 250 they got Foil Angel Tokens, which you only got a regular one. They got Foil Flip Cards. And if you were smart, and this is what happens sometimes, you went and traded for all those Demonic Tutors because you checked online and realized, wait a second, it, like, it's like just like a few stars. And this card is 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Let me trade for all 50 of them. Like if that happened, I would in I if I was in that store, I obviously wasn't. I would be like, all right, I'm going to the bank, and I'm going to take out a hundred dollar bills, and here's a hundred dollar bill for you, here's a hundred dollar bill for you, <laughs> and grab all those judge demonics, all those foil tokens, just cast them out, and then you somebody's stuck at supporting their local store, which is not an advanced store, and they're not getting a hellbolt, so. That turned out to be a massive disaster, which they could have known if they took a poll. So they're always polling about this Magic Arena and polling about Magic Duels back in the day. Give us, you know, a review, blah, blah, blah. But like, what? Like, did you not poll anyone about like rotation? Like, oh, should we do three sets, two sets? Did you not poll anyone about core set? Like, how are these decisions made? Because you have access to lots of fans who are re ready and willing to be polled. This is an epic disaster. Like, I can't, like, understand it. Like, how can they make... Hmm. I'm all for supporting your local game store, but as soon as this card goes above $10, no one's getting it. Even if your local game store owner is really nice, the tournament organizer is just going to steal them all. That's what happened to Fatal Pusses. That's why all the Fatal Pusses were on eBay the week before they were supposed to be handed out. And then when you go to F&M, there's no Fatal Pusses anymore. I mean, the, the problem is, I think the problem, many store owners don't really care that much about magic, so they leave it in the hands of the tournament organizer who is well aware of the prices of these cards. So, for instance, if whatever reason the tournament organizer believes the Falia from Eldritch Moon promo is one day going to be worth 25 bucks, he's not going to give anyone the Falia promo because why would he? He would just say he ran out. But since I know people, other people in the store, I realize, wait a second, this guy didn't run out. I, I know you have him. And I, can you check that packet in the back? Yeah, that's what I thought. Unopened packet. Um... Yeah, so this was a pretty bad decision. Not the worst decision, but a very bad decision that like shouldn't be repeated again. And guess what? It is going to be repeated because, quote, it takes time to fix it. The best decision you can do for the game store, and uh, this might be a 
many people might not like this is give them modern masters give them the master's products back they made so much money on that product and that product allowed them to survive and make an actual decent product so yes you can have a walmart version of it but do different artwork different chase cards like ghost foils with conspiracy i mean that's an awesome concept uh, back when we had plane shift we had different artwork for the legendary creatures and then the weatherlight and the, it didn't make the card any better. The card, Wetter Light, still sucked at the time. But hey, it was really cool that there's like a one in six chance. Uh, if you open, I think, a case, you get one of them. Uh, that's why I remember when I was younger and I, my friend really wanted the alternative artwork for Wetter Light. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty simple. Like, I, I don't know like what to say. Hey, if you want people make this like a rare that you can get in a boost pack but also give a really nice full art version because you know this is edh of it as buy a box you can have both you can have this card in a set and then you can have a reason for people to want to buy from the store but not have it be so exclusive the last time something like this happened was Na nanoff dragon from dragon con people were pissed like when I mean pissed, they were ready to burn their cards. Like that, I remember that. Cause if you didn't go to, there was a lot of dragon collectors back in the day and angel collectors. And if you didn't go to Dragon Con, you couldn't get one of them. And no one was selling them because they're so exclusive. The only way you could get them was in Dragon Con. Well, that card is now worthless cause they printed it to oblivion, I think in a magazine or something. Somehow they reprinted it and they made like a million copies of it. But they should have known that you cannot give a promo card and just one convention. People are going to get angry because maybe they can't go to Dragon Con or maybe they don't live in the U.S. That's a bad concept. Again, this is bad. They should know this is bad or they set a very bad precedent because Fatal Push went very poorly. Anyway, bye guys.